What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show here on Sherdog.com. My name is Sean Sheehan, and I am back with five more bets for you for this weekend. There is uh, a couple of cards on, the biggest of which uh, is the Cage Warriors card going on over in Wales, and obviously the UFC's weekly card at this stage uh, on in the, uh, the Apex, I believe. Yeah, it was, because I heard Kevin Lee giving out about it. Uh, which he probably should be at this stage of which everyone probably should be. But anyway, we leave uh, that discussion for another day. Um, I've got a couple of bets from Cage Warriors uh, for you to start it off. And then I have three bets from the UFC as well, including my uh, my flyer bet, which has been on, as we all know, a bit of a roll over the last while. Um, we'll, we'll get to last week's, but before that I had five and five, missed the week, and then last week was a no contest, so... I'm going five of the last six still. I still think that's a pretty good record. So if we could hit another one here, it'd be absolutely massive. Um, let's talk about last week before we get into this week. Um, pretty good week. As I said, the flyer, uh, the Austin Lane fight was a no contest. So I actually had money on that myself. I got the money back. So I hope everyone else did as well. If you bet on that. So um, yeah, zero on zero on the flyers from last week. So that's okay. But three out of four on the bets, which I'm pretty uh, pretty happy with, and it was very 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 close to uh, to four from four. Um, the one that didn't hit was Taboria to win by KO TKO. You know, it was a fight where we had a ten seven, and now we know what a ten seven is. It's almost should be finished, and that was due to uh, due to strike. So it would have been a TKO KO, but um, Emmett's a tough guy, and he hung on there for the decision, but. Uh, yeah, I think at plus one seven five, it was it was a good bet, and it nearly came off unlucky there. Uh, the other three bets that hit Neil Magny won. I thought that was a close enough decision to be honest. If it had gone the other way, I'd, I haven't watched it back now, but watching it live, I was thinking, "Ooh, that that bet could be wrong," but it wasn't. It turned out to be right, so we'll we'll count that one as a a lucky one for the betting side of you. Um, then we had Bruno Miranda who won at plus uh, one twenty. I believe that price came in, but that was the price I had it at last week. Uh, but he won, and then Nathan Schultz at minus one seven five who won the uh, the sparring match against his best friend <laughs> last week. But it all counts. They all count. And that was a win as well. So uh, delighted for, with that uh, three out of uh, four from last week. Overall record, 39 of 81. So coming close to that 50% mark, which is pretty good. Uh, and then unchanged with the uh, with the Flyers, nine out of 22, which is is brilliant. Like, it's absolutely fantastic. I, I don't know how many I hit last year. It wasn't that many anyway. It definitely wasn't in the hole of last year. So I'm absolutely delighted with that. And the more... Uh, the more flyers we can hit, the better, because it's, you know, it's just a bit of a bonus. It's a bit of a bonus, but the uh, the 39 out of 81 isn't bad either. Right, let's get uh, let's get straight into the bets for next week. And uh, I'll, I'll start off with the Cage Warriors card. If you haven't listened to my preview with Brad Wharton, please do, uh, because this Cage Warriors card has been absolutely ravaged with different things happening I suppose look the the person who was supposed to be main eventing po- possibly for an interim title maybe was was Old Man Elliot uh, in the welterweight division who had a great win over James Sheehan in Dublin uh, not too long ago obviously um, Reese McKee was on that card as well hopefully he'll be going to the UFC but we'll uh, we'll see on that but he's uh, Old Man Elliot's after getting signed out to fight in Dana White Contender Series uh, I think it's official hopefully it's official uh, it is I think and uh, so obviously he, he's not going to be fighting on that and in Mason Jones, the former two-weight cage warrior champion, uh, who was in the UFC, uh, was going back to have a fight in the cage warriors, after, uh, uh, cage warriors to build his way back up. Uh, he was supposed to be on this card, but they couldn't get anyone to fight him. There's been a few more injuries and things as well. But what we have in my first bet, and what they have as the main event, is the Matthew Bonner versus Darren Stewart fight. And my first bet um, is, is Matthew Bonner. I'm going for him uh, straight up to win. And he is minus one one six. And now uh, these odds are for my uh, our friends over fight uh, odds io. Um, and actually, especially with my second bet as well, just keep an eye on these odds because I'm sure they will uh, change the closer the fight gets, and uh, maybe a more accurate um, price will be up by the by the time the the fights come up. And I'm looking here. Actually, I looked at this this morning. The price is is it's, a, it's actually minus one eleven now. So he's actually gone in a bit, which was uh, uh, surprising to me. Um, looking at it here, but he's around that price. I think it's going to be around an, an even money price uh, between them. Um, and 
to be honest, I was I was talking. I did my preview with Brad uh, a little bit later than we normally would, so it was uh, oh, what day was it? Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday. It was Tuesday, and I was thinking to myself, well, coming into that, I was like, "Oh, this is a tough one to pick. I'm not too sure." And then, just as we were talking, I was kind of thinking back on some of Matthew Bonner's fights again after watching him, and like the way he fights, which is and look. I think he's well-rounded, as is Darren Stewart, but he can fight a very wrestle-heavy sort of game uh, if he wants to, right? And Darren Stewart is a good fighter, but we've seen him, even like even the mixed Stanton fight, and we've seen him in fights in the UFC, uh, when guys kind of scrap with him for a little bit and then go to take him down, he has trouble doing that, or he's trouble with that. He's trouble fighting against that. And I think Matthew Bonner, that like that's the exact fighter Matthew Bonner is, I think. Like, he'll strike at you as long on the feet as he's winning, right? And if he's winning well, he'll keep striking at you on the feet. If if he's winning, he'll strike at you, take you down, strike at you, take you down, do what he wants at you. But if there's any bit of struggle there, he will take you down if he has the advantage there. Like, we've, well, <laughs> that might seem like a very easy thing to say here, but, like, we don't actually see a lot of that, especially at a level maybe that's going, you know, towards the OC. These two lads are 32 years of age, though, you know, uh, in their prime um, and probably have been for a couple of years, uh, if, you, if you get me. So they're well able to do it all. But I think that might be the advantage here. Like, myself and Brad were discussing, we were kind of saying, look, they're, they're similar enough sort of fighters in terms of ability, let's put it that way, and that's why the betting odds are so close. Like, if it gets into a strike match, who will win that one? Like, I don't know, would you favour Stewart by a load, but you probably just about favour him, although Bonner can be dangerous there too. But if it's to get into a grapple match, who are you going to favour? I think you would favour Bonner. And I don't think he's the type of guy who's, you know, some lads, and, and I, I've done interviews with lads in the past, they go, look, whatever happens, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to bang and I'm going to make it uh, as entertaining a fight as possible. And they, they absolutely mean it and they do do that, you know, and fair play to them. But uh, Bonner is the type of guy who will do that if he needs to and if he can, but if he can't, or if it's easier for him, he will go for the takedown. That's the way you should fight, right? That's the way you absolutely should fight. And I think he can do that against Stewart. I really do. I, I think it's the type of... His type of game plan is the perfect type of game plan for Darren Stewart. So if that betting price is coming in from the 116 it was earlier, if it, let's say, it goes into even money or something like that, I think it's a very, very good price. Because, like, you look at the run Matthew Bonner's been on as well over the last while. Like, I spoke about Oban Elliott. He's the only one to beat him in the last five fights, you know? Um, and he's beaten some good lads. Like, he's beaten Matthew, uh, or he's beaten uh, James Webb uh, uh, back in 2021, who's fighting for the title in a couple of weeks' time. And, you know, um, also... To, to put a bow on this as well, like the winner of this will probably be fighting for that title that James Webb is fighting for uh, in a couple of weeks. You know, he's beaten the title, Frederick who looked unbeatable at the time. You know, Darren, is Darren Shore going to bring a heavier uh, knockout game planned in the title, Frederick? Probably not. So, yeah, I, uh, I like uh, Bonner in this fight and I really like that price. And I, do you know what? I like it even more the fact it's, um, it's getting bigger. So, we'll go with that. First bet of the week, Matthew Bonner, minus 116. Right, the second bet of the week, um, I actually don't have a price for it yet, so you're going to have to wait until later in the week for the price, but I'm going with it no matter what the price is, right? <laughs> so um, the bet is um, Milad Hadi, uh, who's fighting uh, Marcondes Bastos, and I'm going for him to win via round one knockout. Okay, round one knockout. Um, at the moment, he is, uh, I think he's around minus 700 to win, right? And I was looking at some other fights and uh, looking at, like, very good strikers who are that much favoured to win. And if you go for a knockout plus round one, I think it's, depending how good they are and depending how much of a mismatch it is, it's around the plus 200, right? Right. I, I think this will be a little bit less. So I'm going to go at plus 100, right? I'm going to say plus 100. Check in the comment section below if you're watching this on Saturday night. I will put the actual price for this. Uh, if uh, Hopefully it'll be going up, but I will put the actual price for this once the, the betting lines go up on what it is for the round one knockout. But regardless of price, if it's minus 200, I'm still going for this. So I'll stick by any price. Um, 
I watched a, a good bit of uh, Milad coming into this, and I am very, very, very impressed with him. I think he is. Uh, he could be a real top fighter. Talking to, to Brad about him, and he's on this um, uh, this uh, reality series that uh, Graham Boylan is doing, and um, you know they kind of needed to get him a fight. I think to, to turn him around for that. So they're put, that's why he ended up on this card. Um, his opponent, you know. He has fought some good guys, you know, but he's also lost a good few of his fights. The one I watched um, uh, first was him versus Lewis McGrillen Evans, who's, uh, we'll keep an eye out in next week's preview uh, as well. He'll be on that, who's a very, very good fighter, and he got knocked out by him. But he has some good, you know, he's a couple of good submission wins. He's a couple of uh, knockout wins himself. Like, he can fight, but I think Melada Hadi is, is kind of going to be just on a different level. Um uh, his, his nickname as well as the baddie so if we saw another baddie coming from Cage Horizon did pretty well but you know he's beaten Tom Mearns he beat him last time out he beat Antonio Sheldon and he beat Keir Harvey who you know fought in, uh, a few times in, in Bellator and is a good fighter as well he went to a decision with, with all of them and he actually funnily enough he doesn't have a knockout win yet in his pro career but you know he has a lot of submission wins and he's a lot of fin- and, uh, and a lot of finishes the things as well but I watching him I just love the way he kickboxes I love the way he fights all around. Now he's he's good on the ground and all of that as well, you know. And that uh, was, it, was it the Antonio Sheldon fight that he barely held on and he should have been finished. But the way he fights, you know, Sopas always uh, <laughs> always make it look better, don't they? And uh, the, that back leg, it's the left leg is just so good. He's a counter striker. Um, I think Bastos will give him plenty to counter. He's good takedown defense as well if your man throws in any of that. Uh, but like the thing is as well, like he's so many submissions and I'm, I'm big in the knockout here, so don't, I'm not talking myself out of it. But everyone wants to grapple with him, and that's why he has so many submissions. And that why, that's why you see him on the ground. In this one, though, I think he's going to be too big and too awkward for Bastos, and I do think he'll catch him early, and I do think he will. Uh, I do think he will finish him. So, yeah, those are my two bets for Cage Warriors. While we're on Cage Warriors, let, let me just run through the prices for the other fights uh, on the card as well. Uh, Reese McEwen, big favorite, minus uh, 551 over the plus 401. Uh, Leonardo de Oliveira, as I said, these prices may change. Uh, we just spoke about Bonner at the moment. At the moment, actually, it's just after changing in, both minus 115, both. So very, very even fight. Uh, this Andy Clamp fight as well. When I looked at this earlier, he was the underdog, and now he's the favorite. He's actually minus 170, uh, plus 140 for his opponent, Ghassan uh, Abadadi, whose name I always pronounce uh, brilliantly. I like Clamp in that one, and I'm uh, I'm not shocked that that uh, price is turned around. Uh, Rory Evans, Jack Eglin, again, uh, Eglin is the favorite, and I think rightly so, minus 190, plus 155 uh, in that one. I, I like Eglin's body work, and I like his slickness of striking. And uh, I do think he will get the win there. Ewan uh, Davis is also the favourite against Alhaji Ndai. Not not a massive favourite, only minus uh, 210. I thought that might be a little bit bigger, so maybe that would be a good price to go for. Um, Jimmy Quinn, Dan Neal. To be honest, these lads are very early in their career. I haven't seen a load of them, but uh, Dan Neal, apparently he's a good prospect coming out of a good gym. He's plus, uh, or sorry, Jimmy Quinn even, is a good prospect coming out of a, a good gym. He's minus... 600 plus 400 for Dan Neal. Scott Pedersen finally getting a bit of easier matchmaker here. He's minus 700. Not the greatest record in the world, but a very, very, very good fighter. He's plus 450 for Johan Salvador. Uh, Stephanie Evan, uh, uh, Evans, uh, who's going to be the, the home down favorite, but she is actually the underdog. Plus 160, minus 200 for her opponent, uh, Mal Chuck. Uh, and in the Ahadi Bastos fight. Uh, it's actually it's minus one. Sorry, minus seven fifty for Hattie right now. Plus four seven five for Bastos there. If you fancy backing some cage wires this weekend. All right, let's move over to the UFC. And the first fight I'm betting on is uh, a fight that I honestly have been torn on all day. I went back. It was actually a great um a great trade by I believe it's Oslot MMA. Um, it'll trade about. And it's a Grant Dawson, Damir Ishmagulov here now is my, is my bet. I might as well tell you the bet. I'm betting on it to go the distance, minus 180. Okay. Uh, and I'm basically betting that because I couldn't pick who's going to win. <laughs> really? I watched, uh, as I said, over Oslan MMA, he did a great trade on Twitter of past Grant Dawson fights. And you know what? I, I always, you, you ask me about Grant Dawson, and, you know, I'll tell you, like, he's a good all around fighter. He can throw in a takedown and all action, all that. But 
every one of his fights he's wrestling. Like, and maybe someone's listening to this and go, of course, Sean, sure that's the way he is. But I don't know, it just didn't click for me. He was that much of an offensive wrestler, but he really, really is. Um, and I had watched, gone back and watched a couple of these fights and obviously seen a bit of that as well, but watched, watching uh, Ishmagula's fight and I watched his fight against Kuta Talade as well, obviously saves me a bit of a time and effort and both of them are <laughs> on this card, but he, he is there to be wrestled at times, right? But, uh, the reason, so I, first of all, I was picking Ishmagulov. I was talking to my, my guy uh, Harry Paul about it as well, and I, I said it to him like, "What do you think of the, the, the if it's a technical striking matchup? Who do you think will win?" And he said Ishmagulov, and I got, "Okay, good," because that's the way I was thinking of it too. Because I was like, if the wrestling uh, is even and it goes to a technical kind of striking matchup, who's going to win that, Ishmagulov? But that isn't necessarily the way it will go because thinking about it more after seeing that trade like if Dawson is non-stop wrestling him he actually is very good at kind of putting on a striking pace to go for takedowns if you get me like he, he sets it up he sets up the takedowns very well with pressure now let's say he isn't getting those takedowns he's still pressuring and in that Kuta Taladze fight we saw that Ishmagulov kind of suffers when he gets pressured an awful lot now you know he can get through it, and it's not, he's not going to get destroyed or anything like that. But I was thinking about picking Ishmagulov based on his um, technical striking prowess. But I don't think it'll actually turn into a technical striking matchup if the wrestling is even because of what Dawson does. So from that point, I'm like, okay, I'll pick Dawson. But then I'm like watching a bit more of him like Dawson sometimes he wrestles a lot but he does end up in the bottom the odd time or he does kind of like get switched or he, and watching the Kuta Taladze fight he does that a lot as well sorry the, yeah the, uh, Ishmagulov does that he did it to Kuta Taladze he pushed uh, Kuta Taladze pushed him against the face Ishmagulov kind of turned the hip got on top kind of ha- was almost going to mount him until uh, he slipped out a couple of times maybe actually maybe that was another fight but he's, he's done that in a couple of fights as well <sighs> I just think this one is just going to be so evenly matched. The fight to go to a decision, I think, is the best bet. It really, and I like when you do as much analysis as that, and as much thought as that, and you can come up like even if it's wrong, right? Even if the conclusion is wrong, fair enough. But when you can't come up with a conclusion, let's let's call it even. <laughs> let's call it down. Maybe I should have gone for the draw on this one. But uh, no, I just I just think it's going to be a, a wholly even fight. It really is. Like, even I mentioned that Kuta Taladze fight. I think it's going to turn out like that. And that was a split decision, <laughs> you know? Um, in his last, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six fights in a row. Ishmagulov has gone to, uh, gone to a decision. Now... Um, uh, Dawson hasn't as many decisions. He's only two decisions uh, in uh, uh, in his career. But one of them was was a couple of fights ago, and his last two fights have gone to the third round. So he's gone longer. Actually, he's last well, his last four fights have gone to the third round. Only two of them gone to a decision. So he is going longer in fights. Obviously, the higher he um, he climbs up through the to the ranking. So you know that's that of what two two fights out of what twenty one go to a decision, and both of them have been in his last five fights that tells a story in itself as well i like this bet it's i would like it to be a little bit of a better price if i'm being honest but i did want a bet on this um minus 180 if it goes out to minus 200 you know maybe i would avoid it because the two of these guys like sometimes when the guys are so good like this someone separates themselves you know uh but i i don't think they will i don't think they will i think it's gone to a decision and uh i'm going for it at minus 180 all right, um, the next fight I'm going for is the main event, and it's Abus Magomedov, uh, and I'm just going for him to win. I'm going for him to beat Sean Strickland, and he is plus 115. And I was slightly surprised, honestly, to see that uh, he was the underdog here. Actually, he's he actually he's plus 125 now, just as I look at it, so we can uh, we can adjust that, plus 125. Let me just do it here while I match you. Um, like... Uh, I, I, was, I was telling you I was speaking to Harry I was speaking to him again and I was like oh how do you think the main event will go and he was like oh I think Abbas will, will destroy him and I'm like ooh I, I, now I don't think it'll be not quite, not, uh, quite necessarily that but I do think he's a tough enough matchup for Sean Strickland like you ask yourself 
in a matchup like this or any Sean Strickland matchup? Why is Sean Strickland a tough matchup for people? And I think a lot of the time is very simply that he spars more and is more used to fighting than his opponents, right? I don't think you could say that for Abus uh, Megamedov. I I don't. The way he fights, he is he's so slick and so confident that I don't think that'll be an advantage for Strickland. Um, his well-roundedness as well. Like, is Strickland going to be able to like completely outbox him? Now, maybe we'll look. That's the reason we have the fights. We'll see on Saturday night. But I think he's going to find it very hard, right? And even if he does, is he going to be able to stop those takedowns? I find that very hard too. And one fight I would definitely point to, although he's now gone down on it, was the Sadabu C fight uh, for uh, Magomedov over in PFL. And if anyone, you know, if you don't know Sadabu C, well, you, you probably should know him at this stage, but he is a guy who... Like Strickland, likes to dominate the striking, right? Now, in very, very, very different ways, Strickland likes to do it with weird movement and uh, high output and uh, and technique, where Salabusi likes to do it with control more than anything else. He will jab you from the outside, use his size, and more so now than, than back then, 2018, power and things like that. But back then, it was more about control. Um... And what uh, what Abbas Magomedov did to him was he took away that control. He was able to outstrike him, even though C is like a master of not allowing people to outstrike him. And he was able to pick him up and take him down. Um, and he won the unanimous decision in that. And it's funny because you look at like a highlight, and there was actually a sure got ourselves, I think, had it up a highlight from the, that PFL season in 2018. It showed all of his fights where he took lads down. Like, almost, I think, every single fight, he took people down in all the fights. But then you see him in his first UFC fight, and he knocks a lad out in 19 seconds. You know, we don't even see him on the ground. He's loads of submission wins. You know, six submission wins, 14 knockouts, and, and five decisions. He can he can really do it all. Like, my flyer of the week changed... Um, because I decided to go for him straight up, but I think him by submission could be a very good bet because he's not a fool either, right? He's no fool. And if Strickland has any sort of advantage on the feet or is even make it difficult for him on the feet, I think he's well able to change things up, go for a takedown and get Strickland on the ground. And from there, you know, Sean Strickland can talk all the talk he wants. But uh, he could be the one very much tapping out if Abus Magomedov gets his way on, uh, on Saturday night. And you know what? I think he will. Uh, so, yeah, that's my fourth bet of the week. The fifth bet of the week and the flyer. Um, it, it, it is a flyer, this one. And I am going for your guy, um, Renat Fakhreddinov against Kevin Lee. And I'm taking him to win by submission. Um, and that price is plus six fifty. Now, I watched. Uh, I watched a good bit of Fakhridinov coming in here. Look, didn't need to watch too much of Kevin Lee. I've seen. Uh, I've seen an awful lot of him, and you know he has. He has five submissions on his record, which isn't a lot for a guy with twenty one fights. But there's a lot of his. And, and look, there's there's a reason why I'm giving this submission. And before I say it, probably people probably uh, probably know. Um, but there's a lot of his fights that go to the ground and it's ground and pound or it's people just like refusing to wrestle with him or being unable to wrestle with him because he's so good, right? I And there's a few fights on this card. I, I think the Ishmagulov uh, and, um, oh God, uh, Dawson fight is going to be like this and the Lee Fakhredina fight. It's going to be a little bit like the... Uh, the fight which I really loved and I'm using as a, as a yardstick for kind of um, wrestling battles is the, the Phil Davis, uh, Corey Anderson fight from Bellator a couple of weeks ago. It was such a good battle on the ground. Like that's a fight I wasn't expecting to be a great fight. And, you know, some people say it wasn't a great fight, but I really enjoyed it because of the ground battle and just the unwillingness of one guy to be held by the other guy. And it was nonstop wrestling, nonstop trying, never giving up. And when that happens, 
two things happen, right? You either have an an epic like that for um uh for for fifteen minutes. Um, you have someone you have that happening for a while someone getting on top and then dominating from that point on whether it's two minutes and they dominate the next 13 or they get a finish or whatever it might be or you have someone desperately trying to get out and then getting caught and i think that's what's going to happen here like kevin lee has been submitted three times in his career right and if you look at those submissions charles Oliveira. Um, Rafael Dos Anjos and Kevin Lee around uh, Tony Ferguson he's Kevin Lee and that'll tell you right he, so he's getting submitted at a high level and why is he getting submitted at a high level if you watch especially like the oh, all of those fights but if you watch the, the opening parts of the, the Ferguson fight when Ferguson gets him down he's or Dos Anjos as well very much, I need to get out, I need to get out, I need to wrestle, I need to wrestle, I'm not, I'm not losing, not losing, not losing. That's the type of fighter Kevin Lee is. And that's the type of fighter, honestly, people should be. But for Kevin Lee, he finds himself getting submitted in those fights an awful lot. Just an awful lot. Like, uh, of his last, f- what, five losses? Um, two of them were against Daniel Rodriguez and, uh, and Ali Quinta, you know, strikers. And all the rest of them were... You know, he lost by submission. So, just, that's the way he loses, you know? And if he's fighting someone like, you know, he like could, um, uh, like Fakhradinov, who's going to wrestle him, who's going to push him against the cage, who's going to throw everything at him and bring the pressure to him, is he going to lay there and take a decision loss, right? I don't, I don't think so. I, I don't think so. I'd like... Look at the Diego Sanchez fight even that happened over in the UFC. It's like, he could have very well have lost that fight, but it was a battle and he turns into a battle. Like, Kevin Lee is maybe underestimated for that. And it's a, it, honestly, it's, what I'm saying here, it sounds like a negative, but it's actually very complimentary because it'll win him most fights. But the problem is, if it doesn't win him this one, it'll probably lose him it. You know? Because a guy like Fakhradinov just needs one chance and he will take it against the guy who is game. And, and I'll say it again, lots of the guys who he fights are not game. They will they will be broken early and finished early. Well, fi- uh, finished fighting. Maybe finished in the fight, but finished in terms of like, they'll just, they'll just be ridden out for the next 10 minutes or the next 12 minutes, whatever it might be. I don't think that of Kevin Lee... And it's the most backhand compliment you could ever give someone. But that's the reason why I think he's going to get submitted. And we'll see. All right. Those are the five bets uh, for the week. Let's run through some of the lines from uh, from the UFC. Um, uh, Benoit saint against uh, Bonfim. I like Bonfim and that. The price, though, minus 300. I see him one place here, minus 335. It just seems a bit high. It's or a bit low, even. It seems a bit low to me. Um, what about him to win via knockout plus one eight five? Maybe, yeah, I'll probably go with that. Uh, bond for him to win. Uh, I think if he doesn't win that, I think he might win the decision plus two fifty. Oh, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. I, I would nearly wait on that one. I San Denis is tough and everything like that. I do like bond for him. Maybe that's one for Naka. Um, Bruno Ferreira against uh, Rubens Abob Ferreira is the favourite minus 182 I like him in that one the straight up prices of Lee and Fakhradinov uh, Lee plus 170 minus 211 for Fakhradinov and I think that's just about right I think um, most other fighters against Fakhradinov would not get uh, that sort of price but I think Kevin Lee uh, deserves that although I don't think he is um, you know, I don't think he's the fighter he once was, to be honest. Uh, Rosa against Santos. I like Carl Rosa here, to be honest. Minus 175. I think that's a good price on her as well. Plus uh, 140 for Santos. Janderson Breto against uh, Weston Wilson. Weston Wilson is a massive underdog at plus 700. And Breto, rightly so, is the favorite over over 1,400. Minus 1,600 in a couple of books uh, here. Um him to, to win um, by decision is plus 500 and that tells you uh, a lot him to win inside the distance is minus 450 so ooh, that's probably uh, probably one we'll stay away from Elvis Brenner 
plus 400 minus uh, 549. Uh, for Goramku to the lads, and if anyone uh, knows, I've obviously listened to uh, and watched a lot of Kuta Talaza coming up to this, which is a waste now because I'm not g- giving him in one of my bets. But uh, I like Kuta Talaza inside the distance. It's around even money right now. Uh, I would probably go for that. Um, the under two and a half rounds as well are at minus 105. <sighs> That's not bad. But if you're going for that, you might as well go, you know, Kuta Talaza earlier. The prices aren't up for the round betting yet, but... Um, yeah, I like Kuta to lads uh, middle to early there. Uh, Petrovic and Catalina are not too far away from each other. Minus uh, 220 for Petrovic. Luna Carolina plus 180. Um, interesting heavyweight fight. Romanov versus Ivanov. Can Romanov bounce back here? He's minus 138. Ivanov plus 110. I, I think the athleticism of Romanov might see him through here, but he can't get hit early by Ivanov, as we we know in all heavyweight fights. Um, I think that's actually a very good price on um, on uh, on Romanov. Like, I think, you know, 16 and 2. He's only 32, which is a whippersnapper. You know, he ran into Tibora, ran into Volkov and lost both of those fights, but he beat all the kind of the middle of the road heavyweights, I suppose, before that. And Ivanov... You know, he he has tied to Ivas on his record, I suppose, but he also lost to Tybura, lost to Derek Lewis and and and, and the rest. Um so yeah, I would uh, I probably I probably leaning Romanov on that one there. And then um a couple more of the fights. The main fights um I like Lipsky at plus two hundred. Now I, I'm very bad for betting on Lipsky because when I bet on her she loses, when I don't bet on her she wins. Um so I don't have a bet in her ear, so I won't say anything. She's plus 200, right? Uh, Max Griffin, Michael Morales. I think this price is a bit wide. I like Michael Morales, but I have great respect for Max Griffin. I think he's a very good fighter. Minus 250 for Morales, plus 200 for Griffin. Would I take the plus 200 in Griffin? Probably not, but am I taking the minus 250 on Morales? I don't think so either. Um If you are going for a bet there, I think you probably go the plus 200 Morales KO. Right now, I just said, would I take the, the the on him to win? And I said no, but if he does win, I think it will be that. So, um, and in the top two fights, they're de- it's dead even now. Ishmagulov Dawson dead even minus one ten minus one ten. Uh, that's look, that's that's exactly what this fight is. It really, really, really is. Um, yeah, no, who's got like who's gonna win it? Ishmagulov knockout plus six hundred. Ishmagulov submission plus. 2200. You know what? If you're looking for a flyer, that's not a bad one because I think like I I think there could be a lot of wrestling exchanges here. What if it turns into the Kevin Lee fight I was talking about and someone just gets caught? Could see that. Dawson plus 1000 for the the TKO KO uh and plus 300 only for the submission. He does wrestle a lot. He does like submitting lads. We'll we'll see on that one. But uh yeah, I like uh, I like the decision on that one. Uh and in a minute, Abbas Magomedov um, as I said, out to plus uh, one twenty five uh, on that one now minus one forty for Strickland. I see him in one place here. He's minus one sixty two. Very interesting. Um, you know, I was looking as I said, looking at the Magomedov submission plus six fifty. Magomedov to win the decision is plus five hundred. Honestly, I love that. I really like that. I I really do. He's plus two fifty to get the knockout. Now he might, he absolutely, but I think that is highly weighted on what he did in his last fight. Now he might do it again, but that's not completely what he is. So I think that might be a little bit of a mistake on the bookmaker's part, and I would be looking at the decision, looking at if you know they do the double price to win either by submission or decision. That'd be the one I'd be going for there. So all right, we will leave it there. Let me just recap my bets quickly. Matthew Bonner over in Cage Warriors, minus 116. Milada Hadi, round one knockout. I'm estimating around plus 100. Uh, Demir versus Dawson to go to the decision at minus 180. Plus 125 for Abus Magomedov. And the flyer of the week is Fakhridnov to win by submission at plus 650. All right, everyone, that is it. Best of luck for your bets this week. Let me know in the comment section below what you're betting on, who you're betting on, and let me see the winning slips as well on Twitter on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whenever you get them. All right, I'll leave it there. My name is Sean Sheehan for SureDog.com, and I'll see you all next time.